Okay. Ah, ha, ha, and now you get an idea for what this plant, what this moon is like here. Hello everyone, Thoranks is here, and welcome back to No Man's Sky, episode 255. Where we have found a wonderful little anomaly planet here to get these spore mushroom decorations. And I must say, I am quite a fan of this color palette. I'm not sure which angle I like better there. Maybe with the ravine, it's more dramatic. But my, my, my. So we're going to build a base on this location. Because it will enable us to get decorations for bases in the future from these anomaly planets once we reach that phase. For now, my, my second concern is that for this system, there is actually a plated planet. Which we went back and, oh my. That's just... It's quite nice. Maybe we can get a little more green. Yeah. That's real nice. I like this planet. I like this a lot. Look at these mesas. Look at this. Hold on a second. This is pretty profound over here. Look at these. And then you got these ravines. Okay then, and that settles it. We're gonna have a base here. I think right here, actually. And then since this system also has a plated planet, we're gonna check that one out, and if that is indeed the exact same anomaly I'm thinking of, we might actually delete our previous base. Yes, I would like to claim the base. An interesting planet. I like these land formations. These are fairly neat. Winds of glass is what the weather registers as, with gold, silver, and indium available. An A-class atmosphere hub. Oh my. I'm tempted to know what sort of atmosphere is available here. We still need to set those up. Those are the resources we have the fewest of, actually, in our cargo, or the atmospheric gases. Everything else is maximum or quickly approaching it, save for maybe ammonia. Still pretty high. We're not going to do that with extra cactus flesh or extra magnetized right? We're not doing either of those. Okay. I think that being said, we should rename the base. Let us not forget that. Sporal double. Sporal double. That works. Thank you. Alright, so now we check the second anomaly planet in this system, and then we have the mega anomaly planet. The moon? I mean, can we leave... Can we honestly leave a moon unexplored that we know is a mega anomaly? Is that a thing? I don't know if I can do that. This planet is cool. I've got to get another picture or two of this planet. It's like the mountains are, I don't know. That almost looks like we crash landed here. <laughs> it's the landscape's just very dramatic. Look at that flat outcropping. There's all these flat mesas here. 
Ah, we got our pictures. I don't. I didn't see one that jumped out at me. And and there's a black hole in this system, so technically, technically we don't have to go back to the other system. We can just stay here. Oh my goodness. Well, if that's really the case, then I suppose what we need to do is probably get our capital ship in this system at some point. All right, I'm not sure why the black hole isn't necessarily marked on my radar. It's possible it's disappeared. It's just not visible from far away. I don't... Hmm. I'm not sure how close you have to be to see it. No, we have to go to the Hyper Anomalous Moon, so let's just do that. I imagine if we see the black hole, we see it. If we don't, we don't. There's not a lot we can do if it's not marked on our map. Maybe it maybe it has a timer or a distance. Once you once you leave a certain distance it goes away. This sort of planet without an ocean is going to be interesting. I'm not sure what to expect. All right, punching down through the atmosphere. It is a oh, very awkward. Uh, there's a discoloration happening. Look out! We've impacted the terrain. We're in a spin. Hold on, we're settling down. Just, just, just get it safely on the ground. Oh my goodness. External temperature reading 92 degrees. We came in way too hot. They're inverted superstorms. It's hard to see a thing here. It's the geck word for in. As in into the frying pan. It's fairly interesting. like a giant forest. I just can't see any of it. There's something up with this moisture, though. I would like to read about that animal, actually. Esso Zake found soaring in haunted, mournful skies of planet Kong Prime. Once they have selected a nesting site, they remain there for the rest of their lives. As they continuously build, the nests of a mature adult are frequently colossal. Filtering gills inside their cheeks allow them to suck up water and extract nutri nutrients from algal blooms. And they have caustic skin. What an odd creature. Fair enough, that doesn't tell me much about what's going on with the atmosphere. There's something going on. The colors here seem all skewed. Like they're just not... Just not right. I would like to get a little deeper into these jungles. Oh, finally, the storm is clearing. Oh, now we're talking. How is that for an alien jungle? Okay, all right. 
We lose those colors and you go to those other ones for some reason. Only the default filter gives you this weird sort of tint that's happening on this planet. All right. So we've established this this moon is weird. We have established that. A little too close to get it all in one. Oh, that's kind of an interesting shot. Without the frame of reference, you're sort of like, what is that? I like those awkward lines that make you wonder what it is at first. Okay, so there are large mountains here. These sort of magnetic swept mountains. And it's got this pink tint to everything. But only until you walk up on it. You get an idea for what this plant, what this moon is like here. How peculiar. Perhaps the base should be on this planet. You could have your base on one of these sort of flat areas. Like a house on stilts above the jungle. I don't know. But I see no black hole on my radar, so I'm thinking we're going to have to travel back to the other system after all. Which, uh, I'm okay with that. It really is not a huge deal. I just thought perhaps it would be visible. Um... No, they got this weird energy in this nebula, but... The other one was this plated planet. And I want to come down to this plated planet. Yeah, well, I'm calling in... I'm calling in my ship, so what do you think of that? Called in, called in my fleet just in time. It says pirate attack ships remaining. I am pretty sure they're long gone at this point. No, more than anything, I'm fairly certain, especially based on the appearance of this planet from orbit, Fairly certain this planet is going to be identical to the other one. That we built a base on two episodes ago? Not built a base, I'm sorry, claimed. Claimed for a base in the future. And if it is the same, then we're going to keep this one since we have two anomaly planets in this system. And we'll just undo the other one. Wow, look at that shiny, shiny metal surface. That is pretty neat right there. Kind of a fan of that one. All right, coming in under the cloud layer. And it is the same. Okay, that means... Oh, and it's mountainous. Oh, intriguing. No, that means more than anything, we can get rid of the other base. That's so we can consolidate our bases, which is what we... We're not going to do that now, but that's what we did two episodes ago, and we will do again. As we start to figure out where exactly our time is going to be best spent.
no visual indicator for black hole at all. So that says to me we're just going to leave this system and go to the other one. Oh, do I want to look at the viridescent purple planet? Gosh, you know, there's... There's always a reason... It's always a reason to to stay, but we need to Oh, a trader? No, I don't want to trade. But that trader was like, "Wait, wait, did they answer our hail?" <laughs> no, no sir, uh, they just left. Inconsiderate. Son of a gun. <laughs> That's the damn is pretty maneuverable. The only reason I don't take this ship through black holes is because of the damage to equipment. Alright, so I think it's fair to say we can go ahead and just warp our whole freighter back a system. And then just take the end of sleep through through the wormhole. I think that's the right call. So we're gonna swing by our greenhouse because uh, specifically, here, let's let's process all this where it belongs. Um, but boom, 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 boom. We need fecium and mordite and star bulb still. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and also accept all of our expeditions and get ready to send new ones out. And it takes me about 15 to 16 minutes to get all the inventory straightened out. Um, and so I'm going to do that off camera. And I'll bring you back here in just a minute. So it appears one fleet is not quite ready to be done. Still requiring an hour and 16 minutes to go very, very long expedition. The other expeditions I was able to collect without incident, and I figured since the last time we did a little bit of capital ship maintenance, I showcased the construction side of the house, that this time doing freighter capital ship maintenance, I would showcase some of the inventory and organization side. That's right, over here in the Red Wing. So, first thing is we need to put away all these little bits and bobs that were on the freighter when we got here. We have things like meaty chunks and this hexite and, yeah, all sorts of unique little things. Well, right away I know the meaty chunks go over here in box 9. The paleo all day, and then we don't really have anything there. I think for a shield mod... Yeah, modules for starships, a rather uninventive name, but, you know, well, we have the Infernife, Cyclotron, Cyclotron, Pulse Engine, Shield, Pulse Engine, Shield, looking really good, just, oh, love this, looking very, very good. Lots of extra little modules, and then let's see, we've got some spare parts here, which is... no, well, that no, no, that's not what the Herox is. The Herox is uh, one of our shiny rock components there, and so is the Lemium, but our Lemium, uh, we're almost maxed out. Let's see, we've got three Grantine, two Aronium, one Magna Gold, two Herox. Trying to balance these out a little bit, we only have the one Dirty Bronze. We probably don't need to keep stockpiling up this Lemium. But I guess we will for now, because we have it, and why not? Uh, the unstable gel and the stasis goes over here in our manufactured magic container. I'm not sure where I, even how that ended up in our situation. No, I don't think. I think more than anything, we're just going to put the hexite over here in special and fancy storage. Even though I'm not quite sure 
what we would use it for again. Uh, we did get two things to sell. We got the magnetic armor, approximately 911 years old. Valuable in and of itself. This artifact is made priceless by the glimpse it gives into the society that once ruled this planet. And the chipped fire-making pitchfork, 2,580 years old, bears the mark of constant use. A well-loved piece before its burial was it consigned to the ground by accident. Hmm. An afterthought, or placed there carefully alongside an out-of-parted owner. Well, between the two, it's almost 3 million units. That's really good, actually. Our freighter is not too full of nonsense either. Most of it was, in fact, more units. And since these will be sold, and this will be sold, this will be what it is. Sold and sold. So then I guess we'll come right back over here to shiny rocks and see if we need any of these. I think the Aronium, till it's full, the Grantine, oh, we're not going to need that much Grantine, come on. More than anything, I would start another pile of Iridescite, put more Geodesite in there, sure. So what do we do now that we start? Okay, so the question is, what do we do? Which is why I wanted to showcase some of the storage. So we start, we start piling up all these goodies, right? Like all this grantine, this aronium. So at this point, this is when we are going to start messing with the construction again, because really the best, the best thing to do is to just spin these into more resources. Yeah. So gold not a horrible resource to get more of especially if you've been using some of it like we have look at that 2500 gold I'm a fan and anytime you get excess gold you get excess silver you can spin up platinum which then equals extra nanites if you're feeling fancy more silver. And from there you can see, okay, we're a little bit over maximum. So instead we're going to put these on the freighter. Very valuable stacks of minerals. Look at those. Some of these are incredibly valuable. Some of these, not so much. The platinum, though... Look at that. Hmm. <laughs> that's just... That's really good stuff. Let's get some stacks of platinum and just sell those. Okay, but we're, since we don't have all of our expeditions back yet, we can't very well... We can't very well send them out, because then we'll have them on, like, different schedules, and I don't, I don't really want to do that. So instead, we will travel back. Uh, wait, no, we're on the far side of the green the greenhouse. Gotta go this way. So we'll travel back to our previous system and take the black hole that we know is still there. Just because the one in this system abandoned us. 1.5 million for 1,700 activated indium. Not bad at all. Sure, those in the Gek Relic. Gold, silver, all that stuff should all be sold. I will check, actually, and see if they're selling tritium here. That would be swell. Of course not. Why? Because we need it. All right, well, I am convinced that we have done what we needed to do here, and now I would like to return to our cam limit. Or should I just jump further ahead? Oh, right, like why would I go backwards? Why would I go backwards indeed when I don't have to? Two planets, medium economy, one star economy, one star economy, yikes. Now we're getting out of jump range. Oh, 
All right, hold on. Two star. Well, I like two star better than one star. I would love to get a three star and just get a ton of tritium. Nope, not the chromatic. Oh, one star. Why are you doing this to me? Three star, out of jump range. Oh, it is too. Oh, there's a lot of planets on that one. Look at that. It's like a binary star system. Double red stars, both with water. Wow. I'm almost thinking we need to do some more just deep exploration where we're not following anything at all. Okay, two-star economy. Sounds good. Let's do it. You only spend so much time looking for that perfect economy before you just gotta pull the trigger and go. Dark Nebula. Foreboding. Okay, we're pulled up right in front of the space station, and we've discovered a black hole. Let's inquire about that tritium. Mm, not a chance. Not a chance. Oh, we still have our things. Hold on, we haven't sold... We haven't sold the two collectibles in our inventory. Namely, the magnetic armor and the chipped fire-making pitchfork. Not sure what a chipped fire-making pitchfork is. That sounds kind of cool. I mean, it's a pitchfork you make fires with, obviously. I'm just saying. I'd love to see it in action. I guess that's all I'm saying. I'd just love to see it in action. Black hole in the dark nebula. Oh my goodness. Ominous and spooky. Alright, well let's punch through this a little bit to look at... <gasps> It's a new Earth. Splendid and untouched. A beautiful, flourishing planet. Alright, works for me. Let's do it. That's right. And I almost thought we'll just go straight to the to the black hole and we'll just not even look at this system. All right, let's see what we got. Trade frequency. I mean, sure, trader, what do you have? I don't, oh my gosh. You're wasting my time, see? Look at the high sea levels here. Flourishing planet, but the terrain looks particularly brown. Let's give it a shot. Diving straight in. I can see there is water on the surface. Maybe not as much as it appeared at first glance. Punching through the atmosphere now, there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. Alright, we came in a little hot, trying to lose some of this energy. Oh my. Oh my. Everything is very green. It looked brown from orbit, but I have to say, this planet is green with trees. Okay, it's got a superheated drizzle. But I mean, that is the bluest 
bluest of water. I mean, really, it's a little lagoon. Tropical, tropical paradise. Now let's go something more uh, vibrant. Um, no, no, no. Let's see. Let me see what filmic looks like. We need to change our characters. Oh, what? Missing out on the real picture. Wow. Okay, hold on. Maybe if we get just kind of ourselves. But I want to see the sky. Yeah. Default. Sure, we'll get one at default. Filmic looked better, though. Vibrant. I'll go with that. Mm, without the trees. No, you need the little palm trees. So we're going off the rails. No, it's okay. It's okay. Trust me, it's all part of the plan. Get a little bit of the trees, right. And the water, like that. Okay, enough of that, because now we're getting cooked in a, in a nighttime steamy storm. But we're going to have to continue this in the next episode. Until then, take care.